amusing music inspired by Zenen Music. Uh, he's a new guy on block. He just joined YouTube 2020. Uh, please, if you feel the music, you can go and subscribe on his channel. His music is free for use. He now so far has two. His music is free for use as long as you subscribe and credit in your video. So with that done, let's continue. Thank you for watching these videos once again. My name is Kamiya Simon. Today we're going to talk about the 3DS Max architecture. Now you can see that we are still using the documentation and we're trying to understand the documentation. Now I'm going to try and summarize some of the things that you need to know in this video. Okay, so do not skip this video. And then in the next video we shall get to practice by starting uh, to create something, a box. Now, this is the architecture. I don't want to spend a lot of time since we have a lot to cover. Now, what this image is simply summarizing, okay, let me do a simple reading. 3ds Max is an advanced modeling uh, package. Max has a plugin architecture that allows core functionality. So, most of the things that you see in Max are, are inserted in as plugins, okay? Some for animation, rendering, modeling, and this is what you manipulate. Now, for you to access it, you need the SDK okay and this is what you're manipulating you're manipulating animation plugins modeling plugins rendering plugins utility plugins and some other extensions okay now most of the most of the plugins that you're working on are given extensions so max script is also present i do not want to forget to let you know that i have videos of max script if you want to learn please go and check them out on this on this uh, same channel all right so apart from that we're going to get to to the sdk and we'll we let you know that sdk contains c plus plus abstract classes all right so this is the most important thing that i'm looking for now when you're programming um in visual studio okay in the solution explorer in in the solution explorer if you come to external dependencies you're going to see most of the classes that you'll be referencing to while accessing most of the items and you very well know that in c plus plus we must have a header class so we have dot h all right all right so those classes are also categorized those classes are also categorized if i come back to the documentation if I come back to the documentation, we're going to say that we have classes and libraries. Some uh, interface represent service exposed by 3ds Max. Okay, their implementation is stored in libraries. These services often refer to the 3ds Max core as explained in the architecture here. All right, so this is a 3ds Max core and for you to access, you need the SDK. All right, so let's go to the plugins. So most of the plugins will be given special extensions. Uh, now, if you're going to create, let me see. Um, okay, so let's say you're going to create, um, okay. Most will be extensions that come, f uh, that are libraries. Now, plugins are packed in DLLs, that is dynamic load libraries, and they are recognized as DLLs. But, okay you'll have you'll have specific folders for dll files such as dlos dlm dlu dlt now we shall see how these classes are uh, referenced uh, okay so let's go to the class hierarchy let's go to the class hierarchy now in the classes we have the super class okay and then we have the class itself now this diagram shows the most important classes in the hierarchy so all reference to animatable since most of the items in 3d uh 3ds max are animatable okay and then you have a reference marker we're going to go come to that reference system and then you have a reference target and then you choose uh now it must be either a base object where we have um, modifiers and objects 
all a material base a control render or special effects so under objects that that's where we find now so we have the base class okay and then we have the object class where we find the jump object the camera object you know and then the modifier since the modifier works on the object that's why it's different it has a different handle here but it also belongs to the base object S the other side we have the material okay so you, you have the texture map we have the control we have the renderers and the special effects that will belong to that but they all reference to a reference target and still we have extensions such as the utility objects the gup the scene export the scene import all those are independent of uh of what is in the node here all right so we're going to go to the scene graph and nodes and then we see now whichever item that you have in 3d studio max okay has a node and the node is what has the properties of the object let's say you have okay now let's let's read a bit here the 3ds max objects that the users can create and manipulate in the viewport are called scene objects scene objects are derived from the object class now for example the scene objects um of the geometric object class okay so we have the geometric object class the lights belong to the light object class the cameras the okay but not to be confused with the regular modifiers okay that's different so when you create um a box a cylinder they belong to a gem object when you create an omni light okay a spotlight different from um, um, an omni light they belong to the light object class okay now the geometric the geometry pipeline system handles mesh processing conversion it allows objects to be operated on modifiers okay but however now this object you create it must have a node all right it must have a node and we're going to see that i just want to summarize this video so that we go and see but the node the reference okay like most modeling and rendering software has a notion of a scene graph which is a tree of scene nodes okay each node is a hub of information now the node here and it is referenced it is exposed through the inode class the interface class of the inode now the the geometry object here will be able to create a box but the properties of the box must be attached to a certain node and this node is what has the properties of the geometry that you've created for example the color the size the number of segments meaning the hierarchy will have the i node attach this to the object all right so um let's go to the parameter blocks now the parameter block system is a mechanism used to manage parameters used by a plugin for example the bend modifier or a sphere's radius okay now these parameters are attached to the other node that we talked about for example you expose a ui element to the user okay 3ds max uses the parameters block system to expose one expose ui elements to the user either automatically or manual manually to to notify the plugin of changes or parameters using the reference system okay we come into the reference system sim to serialize a plugin data specifically data stored to that plugin associated block and then exposes the plugin data to the max script all right the parameter blocks is represented by ipram block 2 uh, and are not constructed from a parameter block descriptor now let's say you want to save something uh let's say you want to save something uh, that belongs to the behavior of that plugin okay the parameter blocks here will store that information that is needed all right so the parameter uh, reference targets uh, should i get to the references and because before i get uh, to this okay let me get to the references 
all right so this is a reference system all right so the reference indicates the dependency between two plugins or two objects now if i have the child and parent or if i have a, a plugin that is creating a, a teapot okay and then i have a camera the camera will be notified about the rotation of the teapot okay by the reference marker of the, and the reference target system and that's why we have the reference system here so a teapot will have controllers that is position rotation and and scale and then uh, there will be parameter blocks attached to that now this parameter blocks um, changes in these parameter blocks here will be reference to this parameter block okay so remember parameter blocks store data okay uh, the the data of well, that belongs to that particular plugin that i've created or object so changes here will be reference to this to the parameter block of the camera and the, the camera will update its parameter block let's say the camera changes in its position it will supposed to read the angles and the direction that that now the teapot is facing the angles and the direction that now the teapot is facing so that's the purpose of this reference system over here all right so let us go to the um, uh, let me see times and intervals uh we shall come ahead to time and intervals but the pup, the re the reason you need time and intervals is because when you animate something okay through the animatable class you must set the time and interval now you can set the time and interval before you even change for example whenever you want you don't want something to change in time you record that its time will be by default zero okay so in any case you if you animate let's say i've created I want to reset something but at a particular keyframe and I record that it has gone back to zero I need to record that at this time in the keyframes I need this thing to switch back to position a b c d but at that particular keyframe and then I tell that I need to record this particular place now the user interface of course we're going to access the user interface we shall come back to it but I guess I've given you the overview